Uh, meanwhile, Jan, first time you've been on for a while, um, we see Fernando Santos leaving Portugal. Flick, though, still in charge at Germany. Uh, Bear of, uh, of Sack, though, what's going on there? Well, they found another way, and it's a very special German way. First of all, they had to fire someone, so they couldn't take Flick because he is a former Bayern, so they took their sport director or the head of sport, Oliver Bierhoff. They kicked him out, and then typically Germans again. They make two task forces. Task force number one, that is uh, with uh, Rummenigge, Fuller, Sama, uh, it's uh, Oliver Kahn, it's Oliver Minzler for Red Bull, uh, and then it's Neudorf, the president. That is the external uh, uh, the task force. They, they met up today, and then they have an internal task force who's going to analyze everything. That is Philip Lahm is a part of that. So they're going very into the analysis in Germany. But at the end of the day, when the same people who has run Germany for 10 years are going to discuss what they're going to do in the next 10 years, I'm not very optimistic because they can't produce a number nine. Uh, that is not possible. They can't produce passion and will. I think that has to come from, from the players. But having said that, I think it was right to keep Hansi Flick. Uh, but being a fan of German football, as I am, I didn't like the analysis after the game because the only thing they said, well, we had 20 bad minutes against Japan. OK, thank you for the analysis. Hello, task force. <laughs> um, what are these task force doing, Jan? What's the point? The point is they did the same in 2002, before that World Cup. They were in a crisis and they put all the old, great players. You have to win the World Cup in Germany to be a part of that task force. And then they put some others uh, in as well. But it, it's quite funny because the last time they did this task force, they decided, why don't you, Rudy Fuller, doing it? And that was quite successful. Remember, back in 2002, they surprisingly went all the way to the final, losing against Brazil, the two goals of Ronaldo. And the first thing they have to do now is to set, sit down to get a new sporting director because after to Oliver Beer of that job is vacant and the favorite to take over is the CEO of Hertha Berlin, Freddy Bobic, the former international uh, German uh, football player, Freddy Bobic. Uh, uh, and that is the first thing they're going to do. And today was quite funny, I have to say, uh, because Oliver Kahn was flying in with his jet from Doha. And the first thing he did when he came to Germany, he fell down the stairs at the air <laughs> airport because it was so slippery. I, I thought that was quite funny. I think that's kind of summarise German football at the moment. Oh, so oh, Oliver yeah. Bierhoff, sporting director at international <laughs> level, Jan, what, what does that entail? Yeah, it, what, it's, yeah it, it's, it's a good question because, because he's more sporting director, a lot of sporting director, because he's been a CEO of sport in all kind of d departments there. But he's been there for 18 years, he's won the World Cup, it was very associated with Joachim Löw. But remember Hansi Flick, they say he's a new start, but he, he was the assistant coach at the National before he, he, he then came to Bayern and, and had different jobs at the uh, uh, association. So the, 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 the unbelievable thing has happened is that English football are at the moment developing more young talents than the Germans. Remember, like 15 years ago, all talents came up from German football. So I'm not sure sure that the task force can develop those players before they have the Euro at home in a couple of years' time. Uh, right, enough of this. Uh, let's talk about Manuel Neuer, shall we, Jan? Because it's the first time you've been on since, of course, he broke his leg skiing. Stevie was scathing, absolutely furious with the fact that he even put himself in this situation. Has that been mirrored in Germany as well? Oh, you believe that? I mean, unbelievable. First of all, they tried to sell it that he was walking with his skies, skis. I, I, I'm, I'm from Norway. We actually use ski to go to job, but I've never heard someone walking on skis. <laughs> so then they, so then they found out that he had been going on skis, which means that is a bit more level. And then I found out that he was going downhill. So that was the next part. And, and the, probably the boys have said the same, but, but in all these contracts we signed was like 200 pages all the time. I can remember I always had a, 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 a clause or a rule in my contract that I didn't have to do, couldn't do those kind of activities. I remember once I did it and I just told someone, if, if I get injured, you have to take me to a football ground somewhere. So I'm, 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 I'm training football. But that is unbelievable that a professional like Manuel Neuer can put himself in that, that kind of position. So it's, it's, it's literally embarrassing. And Bayern got a lot of 
tough decisions to be made now if, if they're going to buy a new keeper, if they're going to stay with Sven Ulreich, who is the goalkeeper, the number two, or they're going to take Nubel back, uh, who belongs to Bayern, but is now uh, in Monaco. So very embarrassing for Neuer, Bayern and the German national team. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.